All right, so it's now finally time to start coding. We're going to need some software first on this computer. So we want to make sure that we have Java version 8. So if you open up your terminal, if you're using Ubuntu or some other Linux-based operating system or the Mac, you can very simply open up the terminal and type in Java-version to see what version we have. So I have Java version 8, and this is the version that you need on your operating system, okay? Spark does not support older versions or newer versions. Now, Java at the time of this recording has advanced to version 10, but we still have to use version 8 because Spark is still catching up with the newer versions of Java. So let's stick with this version, Java 1.8. Make sure you have that. Now, a prerequisite for this course is for you to know some Java programming, okay? So I expect you to set your environment up uh, with Java, but just in case you're not aware, I'm going to open up the browser here and I'll show you where you can get that from. So if you do JDK eight download all right type that in your browser and hit enter the first link is the oracle website click on that and accept accept this license license agreement and you can then download uh, the java for your given operating system so i'm using the mac os uh, so i would have clicked on this link if you're using windows you'd have to click on their respective links okay so since i already have java i'm not going to go through that step and bore you i expect you to sort of be able to set it up on your own if you have trouble i have provided documentation on how to go through the steps of getting java on your system in detail okay but i don't want to bore you with those details in this video so we've got java the next thing we need is the development environment the code editor so the code editor, or also known as IDE, that we're going to be using in this course is Eclipse. So you can get that from their website. If you just Google Eclipse Installer, hit enter, and the first or second link down right here, Eclipse Installer, Eclipse Packages, this is the thing that you want to click on. So let's click there, and it has all the instructions that you can follow for Windows or Mac. It's actually very, very straightforward. So just follow the instructions on this page. Uh, you'd have to click the uh, link for your operating system. So I'm using the Mac OS. I've already done this, so I'm not going to bore you with that step. You would need to uh, select the link for your given operating system. And once you're done installing Eclipse, you'll have a folder called Eclipse. Now on my desktop, I created a folder called Spark Course. All right? There's nothing in this folder at this moment. I'm going to be saving all of the code as well as some other uh, software if we need in this folder called Spark Course. So you can follow the same convention. And the Eclipse software that I just downloaded, it came in my download folder. So I'm just going to drag that from the download folder over into the Spark Course folder. Okay. And if you expand this, this is the uh, icon that I expect to see. It's about 19.5 megabytes. Doesn't matter, let's double click it and start up the Eclipse software. So now it's asking me to pick a, uh, a workspace, right? This is where all the code is going to go. So we need to declare a location on this system of where the code is going to reside. So I like the suggestion that it's giving me to save it in the Spark course folder in a folder called workspace. So I'll stick with this suggestion. Right? It doesn't exist in this folder yet, but as soon as I click launch, it will actually create this workspace folder in this Spark course folder. Okay, Now you may see a different destination. Just go to browse and change the location of where you want to save the code in your operating system. So let's click on launch. And this is the welcome screen. So let's close this welcome screen, and this is where we're going to be spending most of the time programming Spark applications. So hopefully you have some experience with Java and you've used environments like this before. The build tool that we're going to be using to manage our projects in this course is called Maven. Now you don't need to be an expert at Maven. You know, it's actually very straightforward. I'll walk you through the steps. Uh, so first things first, let's create a Maven project. So right click here, go to new and go to other and choose the Maven drop down link right here and click on Maven project. Click next. And here we're going to use the default workspace. All right, we already set that up before Eclipse started. Um, and we also want to check mark this, where it says create a simple project. So let's click Next. And here we have to define some values for these fields. The group ID basically is uh, the corporation's name that you work for or whatever. So in my case, it's jobreadyprogrammer.com. That's my website. So the convention is we put the com first, dot jobready 
Programmer, right? But that's my company's name. And then the artifact ID is going to be the name of this project. So we're going to call this Learning Spark. And we're going to leave everything else as default. Make sure the packaging is set to jar. And let's hit finish. And in just a few moments, you should see the project appear in your package explorer. And there it is, Learning Spark. So expand this and you'll see in any Maven project, typically you have the source main Java folder and you have a source main resources folder. So we're going to be creating our files in those folders. And then down here, this is the key for Maven. Again, you don't need to know Maven for this course. I'm going to walk you through the steps. So let's open this palm.xml file. Now all the programming libraries that we're going to use to, to uh, write Spark applications, those libraries need to be imported into this project, right? They need to be brought into this project. And the way we do that is we list those entries in this palm.xml file. Now I've already created the file. Uh, and I put it on my GitHub account. So you can actually access that file from this link. And all you have to do is copy all the contents of this file. Okay, everything in this file, make sure from the top project portion all the way down to the, the last project tag down here, the closing tag. Copy all of that and then uh, paste it into this file. Right? Replace it with the contents that we just copied. Okay, and that's it. And typically, you just have this properties tag, which contains the versions of the software. And then you have these dependencies. Okay. Um, and the ones we are using is Spark Core, Spark SQL, and then some logging stuff. And then there's also Spark MLib, and so on. Okay, not to worry about these details. Let's close that. Now you may have noticed this Maven dependencies item just popped up. Okay. As soon as we entered things into the palm.xml file, and we saved that file, this Maven dependencies has been added to the project, all right? And for you, you may have to refresh this if, it, if it's not done automatically. You can right click the project and click on refresh right here or type in F5 and it'll refresh the project. And you'll see that there's this Maven dependencies. If you expand that, these are all the libraries that are now part of this project and everything you need for writing Spark applications. Now this list also contains the Spark software, you know, bundled up into a jar, meaning uh, you don't need to actually go to the Spark's website and download a separate version of Spark. You can actually use the version that we have imported into this project, the jar. Uh, so we have everything that we need right in our Eclipse environment. I'll show you how to do this later on the cloud. And for that, you know, we may have to use a different process. Now you'll notice for me, it's saying the GRE system that it's using is 1.5. So we, we've already installed Java 1.8 onto this machine. So we need to make sure that Eclipse recognizes that and uses the JRE system libraries of 1.8, Java 8. So to do that, if you right click here, go to build path and go to configure build path and then click on libraries. And notice we don't want this. This is too old. This is Java 5. Click on edit and you'll be able to uh, choose 1.8. Okay, this is the version that I downloaded of Java. So let's click that and then hit finish and apply and close. And boom, notice now you should see 1.8. All right, so if you made it this far, you're ready to rock and roll in this course. I just wanted to take this video to explain to you how you can create a typical Spark Maven project. If you needed to do it from scratch, this is how you would do it. Now, I've already created the source code for this course. All of the uh, projects that we're going to be working with in this course have already been created. I uploaded them to the GitHub repository. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how you can access that code and how you can import it into Eclipse to follow along in the videos. Okay, so make sure you watch the next lecture and follow those steps to bring in all of that code into your development environment. So let me wrap up this lecture. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.